Hello and welcome to our presentation. My name is Vladimir and I'm happy to present our work on visually guided sound generation. Given a set of video frames, our model can generate relevant sound. Here are a few examples. Compared to the state of the art, our model generates relevant and high fidelity sounds faster than it would take to play it. On top of this, it is more parameter efficient because it supports multiple data classes. With this work, we contribute three things. A novel method for visually guided sound generation, a perceptual loss for spectrograms, and automatic metrics for evaluation of relevance as well as fidelity. As the first step, we suggest shrinking the training dataset into a spectrogram codebook. In the second step, we will train a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model to sample indices to the codebook, given a set of video frames. Let's discuss each step in detail. In the first step, our goal is to build a spectrogram codebook. Here we are going to use a variant of VQAE called VQGAN. We plug in the original spectrogram and want the outro encoder to output a close reconstruction of the input. The encoder forms a small-scale representation of the input. We are going to pair each vector in this representation with the nearest element of the codebook. As a result, we will have a quantized representation, which we will decode back to the spectrogram dimensions. To train the discrete autoencoder, we will use the traditional VQVA losses plus the adversarial and perceptual losses proposed by VQGAN. Since the perceptual loss used in VQGAN is based on ImageNet pre-trained VGG16, it is unreasonable to expect that it will perform well on spectrograms due to the domain gap. For this reason, we train a VGG16 on spectrograms from scratch as a classifier on a large-scale open domain dataset called VGG Sound. In the second step, we train an autoregressive model to sample from the codebook. To make generated samples relevant to the visual information, we prime the sampling with a set of video frame features. The autoregressive model is trained to predict the next codebook index given the visual features and previously generated ground truth codebook codes. As the ground truth codes, we use the encoding of the original spectrum. We use GPT-2 with 24 layers as the autoregressive model. But both steps can be trained on one consumer type GPU. What happens during the test time? After we finish sampling the codes, we look up the codebook with a sampled indices. By doing so, we will obtain the quantized representation that can be decoded into a spectrogram. Finally, we want to generate the waveform from the spectrogram with a vocoder. As a vocoder, we train MelGAN from scratch on VGG Sound dataset. MelGAN takes a fraction of a second on a CPU to reconstruct a 10-second spectrogram and delivers decent quality. Even though MelGAN is designed for speech, we found it performs exceptionally well, even if trained on an open domain dataset. Next, we present a novel family of metrics for conditional spectrogram generation. First of all, this metric should be automatic because human studies are tedious and expensive. Also, they should support open domain long samples and evaluate both relevance and fidelity. Inspired by the success of inception-based metrics in image generation, we trained from scratch a variant of inception architecture on a large-scale open domain dataset. And we refer to this model as Melception. For fidelity evaluation, we will use Frechet inception distance. However, for relevance, we need some more insights. Consider a video and its corresponding uh, original audio track. We're going to take this audio, extract a spectrogram, and pass it through the pre-trained classifier. The classifier will output a distribution over the classes. At the same time, we will take the visual, visual frames and generate the relevant spectrogram, which will, which will go to the same classifier. Now, we need to just compare the distributions. And for this, we are going to use Kyle Divergent. We call this metric Melception-based KL divergence, or MKL for short. In contrast to, let's say, inception score and FID that rely on dataset-level distributions, 
Here we compare distributions per sample. And we can do the same uh, for the next video and so on. As the final score, we, we, we take the average across the dataset. And let's briefly talk about the datasets. The first one is VAS. It consists of eight classes spread across a bit of a bit less than 17k YouTube videos. The dataset is well curated due to the human annotation and designed specifically for visually guided audio generation. The second dataset is VGG Sound. It is a magnitude larger than VAS, but it is noisy due to the automatic annotation. VGG Sound has over 300 classes of 10 second videos from YouTube. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first to use VGG Sound for this problem. Before training the sampling model, we need to make sure that the autoencoder can reliably reconstruct spectrum since we reuse multiple parts of it in the second step. Also, it provides an estimation of the upper bound of the second step performance. Here are the original spectrogram and the reconstruction from the holdout part of the VGG Sound dataset. And let me play the audio. We conclude that the spectrograms not only looked similar, but also sound similar. Next, let's look at the quantitative results. And according to the numbers, we get close to ideal performance. And this is what we need from the uh, step one model. We also evaluate the VGG sound pre-trained model on VAS, essentially another data set. And for these results, please check out our paper or the project page. We have a ton of samples and multiple model configurations that you can find there. Now let's move, move on to the second step of visually guided sound generation. To put these numbers into a context, let's first consider a model that inputs no visual information. This results provides us with a lower bound on relevance. Now let's add visual features to the condition. One, five, and all available frames from a video. First of all, adding at least one frame already significantly improves the relevance of uh, generated samples. Notice that the relevance metrics is actually in log scale, making the difference more dramatic. Secondly, the more visual information is provided to the model, the more relevant results it produces. However, this improvement comes at the cost of sampling speed. And a similar pattern can be seen on the VAS dataset. Now onto the comparison with the state of the art. Here is an item from the VAS dataset and the output of the state of the art model. And here is the output of our model trained on the same dataset. Just by visual comparison, we can see that the baseline spectrum is significantly blurred and noisy. Let me play the sounds. As you can hear, there is a significant quality improvement. We provide more examples on our project page. Finally, let's compare models quantitatively. As expected, the baseline model achieves strong performance in terms of relevance because we trained one model per class. However, the fidelity is quite low, which results in a high FID score. Our model, in contrast, has significantly better quality and it is compar comparable in terms of relevance while being more than 100 times faster. In addition, even though a single baseline model has fewer parameters, we need to train eight separate models to cover all classes in the dataset. In this work, we suggest a novel method for visually guided sound generation, a perceptual loss for spectrograms and automatic metrics for evaluation of relevance as well as fidelity. Check out our interactive project page for more samples, links to the code with pre-trained models, um, Google Collab demos, including generation, and neural audio codec. For now, I thank you so much for watching, and I hope you will have a great day.